Oh, it's called Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The uh, honourable member, Stuart Nash. Oh, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Before I start my speech, if you could please indulge me the right to say good evening, sir, to Barry Goggin. Now, on the 9th of September, Barry retired as one of the Parliamentary Gallery staff after 17 years' service. A fine chap, a very good bloke, and I hope he's enjoying his retirement because it's, it's well deserved. Now, Mr Speaker, I stand in support of the sale of liquor, objections to applications amendment bill in this second reading, and I am quite frankly astounded that that last speaker, who actually says he is based in Manurewa, even though he lives in North Shore, is deciding to vote against this. I am quite astounded with that because, first of all, Mr Speaker, the last member stood up and outlined the real problems faced in the electorate of Manurewa and then proceeded to say he was speaking against it. Not a good stance. Now, Mr Speaker, there are only two points I would like to make in my time tonight. Well, they're not so much points, Mr Speaker, but rather questions that I will pose and then answer. First of all, I would like to ask the question, what sort of society do we want to live in? And secondly, what sort of message do we, as members of Parliament, want to send to our communities about alcohol? But before I do this, I would like to start by complimenting my colleague, the Honourable George Hawkins, for bringing this member's bill to the House. Mr Hawkins is an example of a Labour MP who understands his communities, who talks to his constituents and who acts on the recommendations of those who come and visit and offer counsel. Congratulations, George. This bill is a case of George's wide and varied consultation. And I congratulate the Honourable George Hawkins for acting in such a manner as to seek to amend the Sale of Liquor Act 1989. When George decides to leave this House, and I know he has a few more terms left in him yet, he will be sorely missed by his constituents and he will leave huge shoes to fill. But one thing, one thing I would like to remind the House is that this bill, this bill, in fact, does not relate just to Manurewa. It relates to the whole country. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, Stuart Nash. Mr Speaker, I understand that understanding orders, a member is not allowed to barrack in such a way that Mr Quinn is without sitting in his actual seat. And if he wants to really interject to that manner, he should go up the back. Well, can I say to the member, and I presume the member has heard this, me say this on a number of occasions, yes, the rules are according to the Speaker's rulings, that a member may not shift their seat for the purpose of interjecting. Uh, however, I note that the member has shifted, as members do, drift down to this end of the House and there is interjection. It helps make a, I shall say, a more engaged uh, place. Uh, the interjection is well liked, uh, friendly, uh, lacking a little humour, I might say. I didn't think that they, were, <clears throat> uh, they weren't interfering with the member's speech, and I would just invite the member to continue with his speech. Mr Speaker... I would now like to provide an answer to the question I asked. What sort of society do we want to live in? We as politicians have a unique opportunity to help define the type of communities we live in and our children will grow up in. We have opportunities to send messages about what sort of society we want to create for our families and our friends and the country's citizens. For me, there are a number of messages that are important in terms of creating safe and secure communities. The first message is that it is not acceptable to have a liquor store or a store advertising and selling alcohol on every street corner. We have enough problems with alcohol in our communities and more advertising in dairies where children buy their sweets is hardly the type of message we want to send to young children growing up. This bill deals with that. Alcohol causes more harm than almost any other drug in society. And we need to send the message that drinking to excess is not normal, not healthy, not acceptable, and will not be tolerated by the wider community. The second message, Mr Speaker, is that for a fully functioning and democratic society, we need laws that respect the views of all who participate in the health and wealth of our communities. Let's be honest. Alcohol sales affect so many more people 
than those involved in the actual transaction. Alcohol, for example, is often drunk near or at the point of sale. So let those who may be impacted by drinking of alcohol comment on where and when a retailer can be located. This bill deals with that. This bill allows this by granting the right of any person to object to the granting of either on-licence or off-licence applications, provided that the objector can produce evidence that they would be adversely affected if the application were successful. The third message, Mr Speaker, is that this bill requires that a report on the social impact of granting a liquor licence must be carried out by the person applying for a licence. Again, what this does is it forces the applicant to take responsibility for their proposed actions. This is a sea change. It is long overdue and it is most welcome. If the evaluation is shown to harm the community, then I have no doubt under this bill it will be turned down. This, Mr Speaker, is democracy as it should be practised. The input of all citizens and the applicant showing responsibility. About time, I say, it makes absolute sense, and I fully support the ability of those in the community by having a say in those activities that have an adverse impact upon them. My second point, Mr Speaker, is what sort of message do we actually want to send as members of Parliament to our communities about alcohol? This year, this huge volume, alcohol in our lives, curbing the harm put out by the Law Commission, chaired by Sir Geoffrey Palmer, was tabled. I'm going to read a couple of things from here that make very disturbing reading. We probably know them, but it's one of those elephants in the room which we just don't like to mention. Well, the time has now come for us to be absolutely aware. New Zealand has a, persua a pervasive culture of drinking to excess. National drinking surveys constantly show that around 25% of drinkers, the equivalent of 700,000 New Zealanders, typically drink large quantities when they drink, despite the evidence linking intoxication to a range of serious harms as a society, we have developed a dangerous tolerance for drunkenness. The latest drinking survey shows 10% or the equivalent of 224,000 adults consume enough to feel drunk at least weekly. For a large section of the population, there is a dominant pattern of heavy, intermittent drinking episodes. The worst pattern for the drinker's own health outcomes and the worst to damage those around them. Is this the sort of society we want to create and leave for our children? Under a section, what's the problem? Alcohol is the backdrop to so many issues. Issues in New Zealand, issues which New Zealand is not responding very well. Issues like obesity, suicide, sexual health, industry uh, injuries and so on. For a significant number of young people today, drinking is not merely an adjunct to their social lives, but the focal point. This report states, drunkenness, not an occasional byproduct of drinking, but an end to itself. Is that the sort of society we want to create? No. Last, research shows, research suggests that discernible relationship between a high concentration of outlet numbers, usually referred to high output density or outlet clustering, and alcohol consumption at the neighbourhood level. The committee pointed in particular to an apparent relationship between output, outlet clustering and the extent of underage drinking. Mr Speaker, I would like to say this is the sort of harm that the Honourable George Hawkins has witnessed in the Manurewa electorate. This is the sort of harm and the sort of behaviour that the Honourable George Hawkins does not want to see all around this country, and this is the reason for this bill. <coughs> Mr Speaker, I pose two questions. The first one was, what sort of society do we want to live in? Now, the answer to that is a society in where all citizens have a say. George Hawkins' bill allows that. The second question I posed is, what sort of message do we, as members of parliament, want to send to our communities about alcohol? The answer, 
is a new message. Responsible drinking is the only